Thank you. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to, to Kim Buckelheide now. Kim, uh, Kim Buckelheide is a professor at uh, Brown University, and he's the, the co-chair of this uh, standing committee. It's his task to, uh, onerous task, to tie up the, uh, the loose ends of this meeting. Thanks, Patrick. And um, so, wow. <laughs> um, John Wellbanks made the comment uh, that data is a fire hose, and I'm feeling the data workshop is a fire hose. I think that's where we're at. Um, Annika, yeah. Okay, so I feel like the bulldog in that figure from uh, Mariah's um, talk, you know, the dumb bulldog up on the, you know, the left-hand corner. I'm not letting go of this Bradford Hill, you know, considerations thing. Uh, but I thought I would share with you, and uh, here's our clicker, uh, what they actually are. Uh, first of all, whoops, okay, so let me go back. Uh, so here they are, and actually the first five are considered the most important of the Bradford Hill considerations. Strength, consistency, specificity, temporality, and biologic gradient, they make a lot of sense. The reason I'm throwing up here, them up here is, as I said, I'm not letting go of this. I got my teeth in this idea. And as I go through the different talks that we heard, and I'm going to give one slide or two slides to each of those talks in summary, I think you'll see echoes of these kinds of axioms appearing in people's work that we can all bring together ultimately over the years to come that will be, you know, the Lance and Chris criteria, I don't know what it's going to be called, uh, <laughs> but that's going to take care of the foundations that we need uh, for the process of data integration. Uh, we had a wonderful summary uh, this morning that Margaret Karagas uh, started off with us that really reviewed what was in, you know, entailed in many of the talks yesterday. I'm not going to repeat that, uh, but you know, that's available to you, and it was really terrific. Two slides of summarizing and her speaking to uh, that data. What I'm going to do is sort of a visual step through each of the talks that we saw. So these are those two slides for your reference. Uh, how many times have we heard about this? And Lance, you didn't even invent it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, you acknowledge, you, you acknowledge uh, John Richardson there, but thank you. I mean, this is really an iterative process, obviously. Uh, one that really struck um, a chord with all of us and was referred to repeatedly. Uh, and that's the process that we're engaged in. Um, I also highlighted these because these are the echoes for me of some of the Bradford Hill considerations. Uh, transparency, replicability, uh, you know, the purpose is to figure out something that we don't know. Uh, we need to know what the tools are, the actual tools and what they're doing. Uh, and, you know, it's not just a big data uh, problem. Uh, you know, so Chris, you know, I have a couple slides from Chris. You know, one, you know, that really struck me is, you know, bigger isn't always better. And I think that was part of the message. You, you can combine apples and oranges and make fruit salad. But that may actually not answer the question or allow uh, a better decision-making process to take place. So you really have to be thoughtful in this process of data integration about what your goals are. Um, and this is really important. I'm, I'm a pathologist by training. Um, we do tests, and the goal of doing tests is to do them accurately in a repetitive way that can be carried from site to site and you get the same answer. It's really important, uh, so I just wanted to call that out for everyone's attention. Uh, Linda, you know, introduced this uh, slide and, you know, specifically uh, the findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data that we all are going to be compelled and want to share. Uh, it needs to be fair data, shared widely. Uh, we're in the process of transitioning to that. It's, I think, a painful transition for many people, but obviously that's the future. Um, so ontologies, I think we're very helpful. Deborah, thank you. Um, the definition is to create a specific terminology between data sets such that you can actually put them into the same uh, bin. 
Um, and without doing that, then it's really difficult to actually interpret the changes that one is observing in those different data sets because you don't have a shared language uh, to speak across. Uh, Lucello is talking about how do you take all of these kinds of electronic health records, data systems, in big se uh, settings and deal with the people and the ethical considerations and the interoperability across those systems. And she spoke of it as if it's a solvable problem, which I thought was really encouraging. It's obviously a really challenging problem, but uh, a solvable problem. Uh, until you get to this picture. <laughs> so that didn't do anything for me. <laughs> um, so a tool, uh, Boutier, uh, he showed us this, right? And this is what you can do if you get 14 million data points on people's health and how they're transitioning across age with the health record information that you can acquire and integrate. And you go from basically being healthy, where you're blue, until you're getting really close to these boxes. And you know, we found out what those boxes mean, right? Uh, we want to stay away from those boxes as long as we can. But that's an amazing uh, visualization of a dynamic process over time. And we've transitioned from foundational information that we learned yesterday morning to uh, two sets of sort of case settings, either health outcomes integration of data or risk assessment types of integration of data. And the first of those is the health comes integration, and this was the first talk in that set. Um, Marilyn then talked about using electronic health records, um, combining all sorts of data streams within those records with other kinds of sources, E by G, genomic data, and actually making inferences from those kinds of com uh, uh, combinations that are complicated inferences. And Sandy talked about you know, using uh, devices and real-time monitoring to generate even more data, in fact, huge amounts of data, 50 hertz worth of data in real time. And you know, just the volume of that data is astounding. And you know, look at these records here. We're talking about an hour with extreme numbers of data points to incorporate into our modeling and into our understanding of what's happening. Uh, so Chris uh, talked to us about um, systematic review. And you know, again, we're seeing the Bradford, Bradford Hill considerations coming up here. So consistency, uh, magnitude of effect, uh, biologic gradient, coherence, uh, temporality, natural experiments, that's the ends of their variability range. Uh, all of these parameters, again, are re being revisited for us in the context of systematic review combining different kinds of data and studies. Uh, Tim Pastor, and we heard this again, enough precision for, for a decision, and the utility of the visualization tool that was discussed um, uh, by uh, Mariah, by Katia, I think, and Mariah. Uh, and then this is also showing us this cycle of problem formulation, adjustment of methods and approaches, revisiting the problem, creating a new hypothesis and going around the cycle once again. Um, Barry, again, I think resonates for me uh, with the Bradford Hill considerations. All of these are constituents in how one actually designs a structure to bring together the people and the resources and the data to solve a problem in an open source kind of way. All right, Katia, I stole this from your website. And this is not what you would want to use as a visualization tool, <laughs> but it has a lot of dynamics in it, doesn't it? Um, so, you know, this has really got a lot of action. Um, can't really, and it would probably mattered over time what got put on there, but as an end tool, it's really difficult to perceive. I thought I'd just sort of poke at you for a little fun. And I've got the microphone, you can't reply. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the research speed dating is pretty impactful, so go <laughs> for it. Uh, and then Mariah spoke, and you know, these are really catchy phrases. Um, you know, get it right in black and white, stay in the plane, eyes over memory. 
And the message from her is go to a data counselor. You know, it's as good as a therapist, right? Um, so all of us need our data counselors. Um, so John, uh, really, I think you know today has been a really amazing day to follow on the foundational work that we had uh, yesterday. You know, what does it take actually to use and integrate this kind of information in the new world? in a new world of open source, large amounts of data, online information, continuous streams of information. How do we make those kinds of structures work in a new world uh, in a way that is gonna serve all of our needs as a society? Uh, and it's kind of impressive. Um, and you know, so we have uh, this presentation. Let me, Melissa, thank you. Um, I wanted to speak to one of the things that she said. Uh, she said, statistical problem, or, or rather, I mean opportunity. <laughs> so, uh, and what was really amazing about her uh, talk is the resolution, the granularity of the data makes a huge difference. Um, you know, this is sort of point source data widely dispersed for EPA surveillance information. But when you get the street view and you get all of that refined granular data, it makes a huge difference in our, our interpretation of what the actual effect is and what, what actually is the signal. Um, all right, so uh, this slide, Jake actually didn't use, uh, but I stole it from his you know, previous slide talk. You know, this is about, you know, he was talking about how do you use engineering approaches, machine learning approaches to make predictions about what you need to actually determine to do the job. Uh, a really fascinating uh, talk. And then our final talk for the day, I love this. Data, I thought data was information. Well, I guess not. Uh, information, I, th yeah, I thought that was knowledge. Knowledge, I thought was meaning. I thought actually data was meaning. But you know, all of these things are, don't equal each other, uh, but we're learning more as we go along. Um, and then sense making, storytelling, I think was the message. How do we convey in a warm way, in a thoughtful way, in a meaningful and emotional way, what it is that we learn? All right, uh, back to the diagram, just to remind us. Um, and actually, uh, Merrily pointed out that you know, this recent volume from the National Academy of Sciences Press using 21st century science actually made an effort to develop best practices a la Bradford Hill considerations for statistical usage. Uh, and that's in chapter seven, the last chapter of this uh, volume. All right. Um, so two things um, on uh, business related, you know, one is we're always looking for topics for future workshops. Uh, you can send those topics to us, uh, access this site, share your ideas, put in as many as you want. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time developing good ideas and then developing workshops from those uh, and successful workshops like this. And so we really appreciate that input. Uh, and then as a final slide, uh, there was a recent news release, and this is a copy of it here. It's available out on the table uh, outside the door there of environmental health of the Environmental Health Matters Initiative. This is a new initiative. You've heard about it. It was spoken to earlier today uh, by John. Uh, this is you know, something that all of us can contribute to and grow going forward to try to find that intersection in the middle between all of our disciplines that is going to be the most helpful. Thanks very much for coming. You really appreciate all the energy in the room and the contributions. I think it's been a terrific workshop.